Gotthold Ephraim Lessing was a German writer, philosopher, dramatist, publicist and art critic, and one of the most outstanding representatives of the Enlightenment era. His plays and theoretical writings substantially influenced the development of German literature. He is widely considered by theatre historians to be the first dramaturge in his role at Abel Seeler's Hamburg National Theatre. Life Lessing was born in Kamenz, a small town in Saxony, to Johann Gottfried Lessing and Justine Salome Vela. His father was a Lutheran minister and wrote on theology. Young Lessing studied at the Latin school in Kamenz from 1737 to 1741. With a father who wanted his son to follow her in his footsteps, Lessing next attended the first and Schuler Street, Afra Monastery in Meissen. After completing at St. Afras, he enrolled at the University of Leipzig where he pursued a degree in theology, medicine, philosophy, and philology. It was here that his relationship with Caroline Neuber, a famous German actress, began. He translated several French plays for her, and his interest in theatre grew. During this time, he wrote his first play, The Young Scholar. Neuber eventually produced the play in 1748. From 1748 to 1760, Lessing lived in Leipzig and Berlin. He began to work as a reviewer and editor for the Vossische Zeitung and other periodicals. Lessing formed a close connection with his cousin, Christ Loeb Milius, and decided to follow him to Berlin. In 1750, Lessing and Milius teamed together to begin a periodical publication named Beatrage zur History und Aufnahme des Theaters. The publication ran only four issues, but it caught the public's eye and revealed Lessing to be a serious critic and theorist of drama. In 1752, he took his master's degree in Wittenberg. From 1760 to 1765, he worked in Breslau as secretary to General Tauentzian during the Seven Years' War between Britain and France, which had effects in Europe. It was during this time that he wrote his famous Leo Kuhn, or The Limitations of Poetry. In 1765 Lessing returned to Berlin, leaving in 1767 to work for three years at the Hamburg National Theatre. Actor-manager Konrad Ackermann began construction on Germany's first permanent theatre in Hamburg. Johann Friedrich Lohen established Germany's first national theatre, the Hamburg National Theatre. The owners hired Lessing as the theatre's critic of plays and acting, which would later be known as dramaturgy, making Lessing the very first dramaturge. The theatre's main backer was Abel Seeler, a former currency speculator who since became known as the leading patron of German theatre. There he met Eva Koenig, his future wife. His work in Hamburg formed the basis of his pioneering work on drama titled Hamburgische Dramaturgie. Unfortunately, because of financial losses due to pirated editions of the Hamburgische Dramaturgie, the Hamburg Theatre closed just three years later. His tenure there was energetic, if interrupted by many journeys. In 1775, for example, he accompanied Prince Leopold to Italy. On 14 October 1771 Lessing was initiated into Freemasonry in the Lodge Zudane Dragolden en Rosen in Hamburg. In 1776 he married Eva Koenig, who was then a widow, in Jork. She died in 1778 after giving birth to a short-lived son. On 15 February 1781, Lessing, aged 52, died during a visit to the wine dealer Angert in Brunswick. Lessing was also famous for his friendship with Jewish-German philosopher Moses Mendelssohn. A recent biography of Mendelssohn's grandson, Felix describes their friendship as one of the most illuminating metaphors for the clarion call of the Enlightenment for religious tolerance. It was this relationship that sparked his interest in popular religious debates of the time. He began publishing heated pamphlets on his beliefs which were eventually banned. It was this banishment that inspired him to return to theatre to portray his views and wrote Nathan the Wise. Works Lessing was a poet, philosopher and critic. His theoretical and critical writings are remarkable for their often witty and ironic style and their unerring polemics. 
here by the stylistic device of dialogue met with his intention of looking at a thought from different angles and searching for elements of truth even in the arguments made by his opponents. For him this truth was never solid or something which could be owned by someone but always a process of approaching. Early in his life, Lessing showed interest in the theatre, in his theoretical and critical writings on the subject, as in his own plays, he tried to contribute to the development of a new type of theatre in Germany. With this he especially turned against the then predominant literary theory of Gottsched and his followers. Lessing's Hamburgische Dramaturgie ran critiques of plays that were performed in the Hamburg theatre, but after dealing with dissatisfied actors and actresses, Lessing redirected his writings to more of an analysis on the proper uses of drama. Lessing advocated the outline of drama in Aristotle's Poetics. He believed the French Academy had devalued the uses of drama through their neoclassical rules of form and separation of genres. His repeated opinions on this issue influenced theatre practitioners who began the movement of rejecting theatre rules known as Sturm und Drang, or Storm and Stress. He also supported serious reception of Shakespeare's works. He worked with many theatre groups. In Hamburg he tried with others to set up to the German National Theatre. Today his own works appear as prototypes of the later developed bourgeois German drama. Scholars see Miss Sarah Sampson and Amelia Galotti as amongst the first bourgeois tragedies. Minna von Barnhelm as the model for many classic German comedies, Nathan the Wise as the first German drama of ideas. His theoretical writings Leia Kuhn and Hamburg Dramaturgy set the standards for the discussion of aesthetic and literary theoretical principles. Lessing advocated that dramaturgs should carry their work out working directly with theatre companies rather than in isolation. In his religious and philosophical writings he defended the faithful Christian's right for freedom of thought. He argued against the belief in revelation and the holding onto a literal interpretation of the Bible by the predominant orthodox doctrine through a problem later to be called Lessing's Ditch. Lessing outlined the concept of the religious proof of power. How can miracles continue to be used as a base for Christianity when we have no proof of miracles? Historical truths which are in doubt cannot be used to prove metaphysical truths. As Lessing says it, that, then, is the ugly great ditch which I cannot cross. However often and however earnestly I have tried to make that leap in the final leg of his life, Lessing threw himself into an intense evaluation of theology and religion. He did much of his studying by reading manuscripts he found while working as a librarian. While working for the Duke, he formed a close friendship with a family by the name of Reimaris. The family held an unpublished manuscript that provided a complete attack on the historicity of Christian revelation. Despite discouragement from his brother, Carl, Lessing began publishing pieces of the manuscript in pamphlets known as fragments from an unnamed author. The controversial pamphlets resulted in a heated debate between him and another theologian, Johann Melchior Goes. In concern for tarnishing his reputation, Goes requested the government put an end to the feud, and Lessing was silenced through a law that took away his freedom from censorship. In response, Lessing relied upon his skills as a playwright to write what is undoubtedly his most influential play, Nathan the Wise. In the play, Lessing set up tension between Judaism, Islam, and Christianity by having one character ask Nathan which religion was the most genuine. Nathan avoids the question by telling the parable of the three rings, which implies the idea that no specific religion is the correct religion. The Enlightenment ideas to which Lessing held tight were portrayed through his ideal of humanity, stating that religion is relative to the individual's ability to reason. Nathan the Wise is considered to be the first example of the German literature of humanity. As a child of the Enlightenment he trusted in a Christianity of reason, which oriented itself by the spirit of religion. 
He believed that human reason would develop, even without help by a divine revelation. In his writing The Education of Humankind he extensively and coherently lays out his position. The idea of freedom is his central theme throughout his life. Therefore, he also stood up for the liberation of the upcoming middle and upper class from the nobility making up their minds for them. In his own literary existence he also constantly strove for independence. But his ideal of a possible life as a free author was hard to keep up against the economic constraints he faced. His project of authors self-publishing their works, which he tried to accomplish in Hamburg with C. J. Bode, failed. Lessing is important as a literary critic for his work Leia Kuhn, an essay on the limits of painting and poetry. In this work, he argues against the tendency to take Horace's ut pictura poesis as prescriptive for literature. In other words, he objected to trying to write poetry using the same devices as one would in painting. Instead, poetry and painting each has its character. This is related to Lessing's turn from French classicism to Aristotelian mimesis, discussed above. Selected works. The Young Scholar. The Freethinker. The Jews. Miss Sarah Sampson. Philotters. Fables. Lessings, Leo Kuhn, English Leo Kuhn, Odier, Badai Grenz and der Malare und Poesie, Minna von Banhelm, Hamburgische Dramaturgie, Amelia Galotti, Antigoes, Nathan the Wise, Ernst und Fall, Gesprake für Freimaurer, The Education of the Human Race, English Translations, Fables and Epigrams, London, printed for J. and H. L. Hunt, 1825, Leia Kuhn, or, The Limits of Poetry and Painting, translated by William Ross, London, Ridgeway, 1836, Nathan the Wise, A Dramatic Poem in Five Acts, translated by Adolf Reich, London, W. Bennett, 1860, Nathan the Wise, a dramatic poem of five acts, translated by Dr. Isidore Kalish, New York, Waldheimer and Zen, 1869. The Education of the Human Race, translated by Fred W. Robertson, M.A., London, C.K., Paul and Co., 1881. Plays of Lessing, Nathan the Wise and Minna von Banhelm, translated by Ernest Bell, London. Bell, 1888, Selected Prose Works of G. E. Lessing, translated by E. C. Beasley, A. and Helen Zimmin, London, Bell & Sons, 1890, Lessing's Amelia Galotti, with footnotes and vocabulary, New York, Hines & Noble, 1899, Lessing's Nathan Dare Wise, with footnotes and vocabulary, New York, Hines & Noble, 1899, Leia Kuhn, an essay upon the limits of painting and poetry, with remarks illustrative of various points in the history of ancient art, translated by Ellen Frothingham, Boston, Little, Brown, 1904, Leia Kuhn, translated by Sir Robert Fillimore, London, Rutledge & Sons, 1905, Minna von Banhelm, edited with an introduction, German questions, notes and vocabulary, by Philip Schuyler Allen, New York, Charles E. Merrill Co., 1907, Minna von Banhelm, or, Soldier's Fortune translated by Otto Heller, New York, Holt and Company, 1917. Nathan the Wise, a dramatic poem in five acts, translated and edited by Leo Marcoon, Gerard, Kahn, Haldeman Julius Co., 1926. Leia Kuhn, Nathan the Wise, Minna von Banhelm, translated by William A. Steele, London, M. Denton Sons, Limited, New York. P. Dutton & Co., Inc., 1930, Nathan the Wise, translated by Bertold August Eisenlaw, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Litha printed by Edwards Brothers, Inc., 1942, Nathan the Wise, translated by Gunther Reinhardt, Brooklyn, Barron's Educational Series, Inc., 1950, Nathan the Wise, a dramatic poem in five acts, translated into English verse by Bayard Quincy Morgan, 
New York, Ungar, 1955. Theological Writings, Selections in Translation with an Introductory Essay, by Henri Chadwick, London, and C. Black, 1956. Lessing's Theological Writings, Selections in Translation, edited by Henry Chadwick, Stanford. Stanford University Press, 1957, Amelia Galotti, A Tragedy in Five Acts, translated by Anna Johanna Godivon Esk, Great Neck, N.Y., Barron's Educational Series, Inc., 1959, Amelia Galotti, A Tragedy in Five Acts, translated by Edward Voretsky. New York, Ungar, 1962, Reprinted German Book Center, 2003. Hamburg Dramaturgy, translated by Victor Longy, New York, Dover Publications, 1962, reprint of Helen Zimmern's 1890 translation, Leia Kuhn, an essay on the limits of painting and poetry, translated by Edward Allen McCormack, Indianapolis, Bob's Merrill, 1962, Minna von Banhelm. A Comedy in Five Acts, translated by Kenneth J. Northcutt, Chicago, University of Chicago Press, 1972, Nathan the Wise, Minna von Banhelm, and Other Plays and Writings, edited by Peter Demetz with a foreword by Hannah Arendt, New York, Continuum, 1991. Nathan the Wise, with related documents, translated, edited, and with an introduction by Ronald Schechter, Boston, New York, Bedford, St. Martins, 2004, Philosophical and Theological Writings, edited by H. B. Nisbet, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2005.